Alright, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is a little sneak peek on the future provider 4.1 and the reason is I was watching this video everything you need to know about provider by Remy and he is the author of this package providers if you have not know of and providers is one of the most popular packages because it's very very useful and the thing that Remy has explained in his Flutter Europe presentation was the different changes or additions to his provider package which I'm going to share with you so he talks about the extension method where you are able to you know for example create an extension method over an object that is already have been implemented so for example you have this integer.parse42 this will return you a 42 integer so it, be, it might be nicer if you were to have a string and then you have a string method that's called dot parse integer and to have that you will probably need to do like this kind of thing where you have to import the library and such however with extensions not only it is easier but it's on the spot so it's very very powerful so by just having this number parsing on string you are able to create a new method and just tag it to the existing object that you want to override or add an extension method which is very good so with that Remy has created or used the extension on context because provider is used on build context so under his reading value subheader he has used the extension method on the build context and he has created these three methods watch read and select so watch means in which makes the widget listen to changes read returns the type t represents type without listening to it so what he means by listening is that when a widget listens it will change and rebuild itself if the type changes however with read you don't listen to it you only get the type for example getter method and whatnot and lastly you have select which is allows the widget to listen to only a small part of the or type of provider so I have with me an example so this is a very simple example with the counter app like all of the examples that you see so I have a change notifier for this counter app that I've created and it has a very simple value with a getter method and an increment method which uses notify listeners so I use the change notifier provider with the counter change notifier to be passed inside our my home page so you can use the context.watch with the change notifier type and then you can use your counter change notifier to extract out the value and the function that you're using so if you just click on this you can see that it's working however watch is only good if you want to listen to the changes and updates the UI so for the read method it only returns the T without listening to it so let's do that just copy this whole thing and let's paste it over here and let's put here read let's save this why is there an error why is there an error so apparently you cannot use context.read dynamic or whatever inside a build method or the update callback of a provider so the only way that you can use this read method is to put inside a class where you have to get the locator or whatsoever to be used inside an external class all right that's interesting and they say if you really want to optimize you can just use context.select which are, we are going to do dot select so let's create a variable called increment and we're going to use context dot select and select is very good I think it's one of the most optimized kind of method you can ever use in provider 
because you are just listening to one aspect or one property of a object that you're passing through the provider. So an example is you put in the counter over here and then you can type in counter and then it will return you the counter increment method. So you can just delete all of this. You can pass the increment method over here. Just putting this here and we save this. So in the end, I created an increment variable that uses the select method. And this only selects one of the property to be listened to. And then you can just put inside the on press method. And then you can just click over here. So I'm still very curious on how to use the read method. So I kind of figured out how to use the read method. So if we were to go to the documentation of read, right? So this method can be freely passed to objects so they can be read providers without having a reference on the build context. So for example, if you want to use context in your own objects, right? Normally people will do this where they pass in the context and do whatever they want, right? And then in the provider, they will just pass in the context using like this. So he prefers us to write something like this where it is a locator. So locator is a type there for just functions. And then with a function, you can do whatever you want. And then in the end, you just specifically use context.read. We are not listening to any changes from the context. We only want the context, literally. Just the context, for example, like its own method and whatnot. That's why it is... It looks like a function itself. So I have created another class and it uses locator. So locator is just a type function. So it looks something like this. So it uses on the read method most of the time, if I'm not wrong. And then with the locator, then what you can do with the locator is to call out any class that you want to take in and you use the method itself so like increment uh, i was thinking you can do it twice so you can do two times because like is way more better than thumbs up i guess then from there after you have created your object with the parameter of like locator and then using it to call in the counter method called increment then you probably either use a multi-provider or you can just call it up in another widget or another builder or whatsoever. That returns you the context. And then with this context, you will then return the dot read. So basically you are getting the counter, I would say the blueprint or like implemented interface. And then with this, then you can use the dot select method to just get the method that you want to use so like dot add and then place it here so you save this so you technically can have another class to manipulate the value inside for example you can have this like class to manipulate the value inside the counter change notifier so if i refresh this and if you like it becomes two we like becomes four six eight ten so multiples of two so i think it's pretty cool if you want to you know like extend this change notifier to use their methods and whatnot, which I think is pretty good. So this is the only time I think you are able to use context.read because if you were to use context.read inside the build method, let's put it over here, then it will shout an error because it's not meant to be inside the build or update callback of a provider. So that's pretty cool, pretty cool. So that's about it. I will recommend to use it at your own risk because you'll get used to the next upcoming provider 4.1 update. And I think it's pretty good on what uh, Remy is trying to do because he wants to make it even more readable because having provider dot off context that's that's three words and he cut it down to one word which is just context and he used the extension i think pretty well so that's about it check out this video um 
it is a very good video on provider in depth and check out the provider package um, honestly one of the best package uh, and provider like what he said it is a wrapper around inherited widget it's not really a state management or dependency injection it's just a wrapper it's a nicer way to see inherited widget inherited widget so that's about it if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want more of this video subscribe and comment down below on what other packages you want me to review so that's about it stay safe and all the best bye bye